Egg laying begins from four to eight days after copulation. The instinct by which the female fly selects an appropriate substratum for the deposition of her ova, and by which the larval stages are guaranteed a development medium satisfactory for their nourishment. The rupture of the corium follows the path of the curving ribs. This is the maggot that even the casual observer is sure to see. The right and left lobes are useful in locomotion. It eventually comes to measure a good 12 millimeters or a little more. The broad posterior extremity is obliquely truncate and bears the two heavily chitinized posterior spiracles which are separated from each other by a distance less than the diameter of either spiracle. To the uninstructed observer, the spiracles look more like two black eyes. In the posterior view, one notes the mid-ventral incision on the last segment, representing the anal aperture. The process of pupation consists of a general contraction of the larva within its own integument, so that the latter comes to form a cylindrical puparium in normal specimens about 6.3 millimeters in length. In all insects with complete metamorphosis, it was formally assumed that pupal transformation consists first of certain histolic changes in which the parts most specialized for a larval existence are broken down. This is followed theoretically by histogenesis of those structures that are of greatest significance in adult life. When transformation has been completed, the fly pushes off the anterior end of the pupil case. In many instances, the adult finds it necessary to work its way up through considerable debris such as straw, leaves, sand or manure whether or not flies engage in dispersal flights, as do some species of mosquitoes, is conjectural. Nevertheless, there are some interesting records of their travelling on usual distances. Debaniva Yukova found that the flight range for Musca domestica in the province of Archangel to be not usually more than 1,150 feet and Hindle, who conducted some rather elaborate experiments, concluded that the usual maximum flight range in England was not more than a quarter of a mile, especially where houses were fairly numerous. He does record one case of flight across open Fenland, a distance of 770 yards. Hindle's studies involved the use of 50 catching stations and the liberation of some 25,000 flies. The adult fly may be attacked or avoided in a number of ways. Of proven value are screens, fly traps, electrocuting devices, sprays, fly papers, poisons, and the humble but always practical fly swatter.